Okay, so one of the things that always frustrated me when I was doing Kinemations is that there are so many tools out there, but all of them feel a little bit clunky. Most of the time, I found myself working with very complicated tools that had a lot of features, but in the end, I had to just erase everything and start over with a much simpler tool. It would start to break. It would start to make issues in my file. So most of the time, I found myself animating everything by hand because the simulation would often just mess up everything. So that's why I made Launch Control. So I wanted a tool that was easy to use and very stable at its core. And the simulation would be like the final sprinkles on top of everything. So this would save you time and it will make it possible to make any kind of shot. You have a solid foundation and then on top of that you have the simulation. But the simulation is never messing up anything because it's just a final layer. So if this is the first time you open up launch control, I would suggest that you use one of the included car models. So let's head into the Epic car model folder and then drop in the Porsche from here. And I'm using Blender 3.4, but you can use Blender 3.2 or above that. So this car is already prepared with a good naming convention that will be detected by launch control. So you can see how the body is called body, the wheels are called wheel and BK.L is for back left. And with this convention, all you need to do is rig to rig the car is click rig vehicle and launch control will automatically detect all the different parts and rescale itself depending on the car. Okay, so now we can play back the animation and we can see that our car is moving. Uh, everything is following along, the headlights are following along. We should even be able to see some nice um, beams from the headlights if we jump in and start to render and just turn off our sky. We can already see the lights here. Um, and if we then boost the exposure, you can see the light texture that's being caused by these headlights. So that looks all great. Everything seems to be set up correctly. You can see the wheels are turning, the tires, the wheels are spinning, and uh, the brake disc is also turning. So the next step is to pick an animation. Um, so there are a couple of different presets animation here we can pick from. So let's try this drift animation, which is to click animate vehicle. And you can see now when we play back, the car is starting to drift around this track. It doesn't necessarily have any um, realistic uh, body wobble. For instance, when the car takes off, it kind of just takes off. It doesn't give this little uh, dip. It will probably give in the back since it's accelerating pretty fast. So let's try to add that with physics. That's step three. So let's click race car and apply physics. Maybe you saw that the car was doing a little when you click the button, that's just because now the physics are layered on top of our animation. That means we have three layers of movement right here. We have an automated animation that is basically following the curve. That's all the stuff you get when you click rig vehicle. It follows the curve, it turns the wheels, it spins the wheels. And on top of that, we layer our custom animation. So for instance, we can make the car drift. This is a custom animation and we can make the car body tilt if we want to force it to tilt to a certain direction. This is often very useful when you're animating because sometimes the physics, they don't really do what you want them to do. But you want the car to do a specific thing, you can just force it to do it. And you can see how when we push it back and forth, the wheels are reacting a little bit by tilting uh, accordingly. So these are the custom animations. And on top of that, the final layer is the physics. Can you see the small, tiny, additional animation like secondary animation of the car just tipping back when it accelerates those are the things that really sell the animation and you get them all for free with simulation and if you ever have to go in and change some of the underlying animation the automated animation or the custom animation all you have to do to reapply these physics is either to go into the post mode and just turn this off you can see how that disables the physics you can always turn it back on it doesn't remove the physics it just disables it temporarily you can do this from the UI as well. You can click disable physics and it will turn it off and delete the bake. So that's the way you go back to the previous steps of the animation, preview those without physics and do your edits. And then afterwards you can apply the physics once again. So in case you didn't like the result or you wanted a little bit more of a, of a pushback in the beginning when you accelerate, you can actually change this in real time with the post physics. So these are influence sliders that can change how much of the different axes are affected by the physics. And I also found in this animation in particular, the jaw 
actually makes everything look a little bit smoother. So that is the car spinning around its own axis. So pitch is back and forth, roll is from side to side, and jaw is spinning around its own axis, spinning around the, the Z axis. So let's turn the jaw up like to 45 or something like that. Maybe that was too high. Let's also try some roll because I imagine that when it goes from side to side, it could look cool that it's kind of um, rolling a little bit because I suppose there will be a lot of forces inside the car and the driver would be able to feel that. And kind of see there just as it stops and starts to go straight, it goes, it wob wobbles a little bit in the end. And also here you can see it. it. It almost slides like this. And that just adds a little bit of extra detail and you can change this as much as you want. Let me take the this uh, wheel impact physics and turn it all the way down because the wheel impact physics is stuff pushing into the wheels. And since we're we are just driving on a flat plane here, there are no bumps, there are no nothing, we wouldn't have any impacts from the wheels because we don't have anything that's pushing the wheels off. We just have the ground and it's always just flat. So I'll turn that off for now so it doesn't give us any weird results. So you see here, it was obviously a little bit too much. So we might want to dial down the roll a little bit and probably the pitch too. And I think we will just take the entire car and then push it up a little bit. So I think it's a little bit too low here. So what we can do is to go into the top slider. This changes between a setup mode where you can change properties on the car, which are not animatable. So these things you're not supposed to animate. Things inside the animation are sliders you were supposed to animate or change during the animation. So let's head in here and this is the height to the ground and we can just push that up slightly something like maybe something like this. And in here you also have other cool things like the suspension length. This means if we lift the car off the ground, this here determines how far the wheels will be hanging below the car. So basically how long the suspension can be, the maximum suspension. I guess for this car it would be a little bit less, something like this maybe. And we'd also do it, uh, make it turn on all four wheels. And the last thing we can do, let me just put this back on the road, is to change how much the car is forced to push through the road. So a trick you often do when rendering cars in CG is that you take the tires and you push them through the ground. And that might seem super weird at first, but if you think about it, when you see a car on the road, it's probably around one ton and all that pressure on the tires will make them squeeze a little bit so they'll become a little bit flat or oval shaped. So especially at the bottom, they will, be, they will not be circular, they will be circular at the top, but at the bottom they will flatten out a little bit. And this is just what you simulate when you push the tires a little bit through the asphalt they will just make the car look heavier. If you've ever seen car animations where the car looks like it's floating and it doesn't really have any weight to it, this could often be the case. And that's why you can take the slider at default values around here. You can also pull, push it all the way up if you have a very heavy car, but generally this value will work just fine. So now that we have adjusted that, let's jump back into the animation area and let's try applying the physics again and see how this looks. You can see how it's a little bit higher now. Maybe it's still a little bit too low, um, but I think it will be okay. I also like that it has some movement to it. Turn this one down a little bit. Okay. There you go. I think that is good. So that is it for now. This was how to rig one of the default cars inside launch control, set up the animation and then simulate the physics. We also talked about how to manage the three layers of animation. So in the future, let's dive more into how to use your own models and how to do your own custom animations with launch control. 